This is Street Radio, keeping you, you dancing in the street. And if you like what you've heard so far, then come and sign the petition, which says we, the undersigned, would like Campbell Bain and Ready Eddie McKenna to be given their own show on local radio and make us the first DJs in radio history to go professional by popular demand. Anonymous dedication to Demi, who works in the travel centre just across from us, from a secret admirer who could show you what love is, yeah. Well, all right, Debbie, is that we called the guy in the blue anorak? Right, party's over. You're busking without a permit and you've got one minute to clear off. A permit? Are you telling me that we need a permit to dance? Going here. We are going to be in the paper. We're going to be in jail, Campbell. Yeah, we'll just merge quietly in the crowd and then leg it. That was Runaway, and this is Ready Eddie standing in for Campbell Bing, who's. Run away! So, if you're out there and Campbell Bain is sitting next to you, smoking a fag or having a wee bled over your invisible voices, tell him to... Is it seven already? It's quarter past. Where the hell have you been? Rosalie and I got an afternoon pass. We staged a publicity stunt. A roadshow right in the middle of Argyle Street. And the police even came to break it up. Are you going to tell me that's not front-page news? What paper could you invite? Invite? You have to invite them. What's that not... sort of... cheapen it? Campbell, this station is falling apart. If something doesn't happen soon, we'll not have a station to publicise. In the past 15 minutes, yet another channel on the mixer is blown. I don't get any good news from everyone tomorrow about a new mixer. We may have to stop broadcasting altogether. You want to go professional? Rule one, turn up for your show! Sorry, Eddie. How'd you not realise that channel was going to blow? How was it not checked? Sorry, Eddie. And what about you? You're the station manager. It's your job to make sure the show goes out. Sorry, Eddie. Anyway, the record's almost finished. I've got to go to work. Let's just try and see a wee bit of discipline and professionalism around here, eh? No problem. Right. Quiet, we're going on air now. That was Baby Come Back, coming at you from 1968. Quiet! Rosalie! Oh, it's you. You're early? Hi. I'd like to see the dog. You're going loony as well, then. I'd like to see him about you. You shouldn't smoke, Jim, I keep telling you. So? So you should stop. Anyway, I have some good news. I'm sure we'd all like to hear some good news. I'm ready to go home now. Oh, yeah, are, eh? I made some lists. First, kitchen. Wash dishes, clean sinks. Put stuff down drain. Wash pipes under a sink. Clean cupboard under a sink. This is my sink list. See? Jesus Christ! This is you ready to come home? Look at you! You're off your head! Look at the clothes you've got on! You've got three sets of clothes you've been wearing for 12 years. You've got to be careful about clothes. What do you reckon folk think when they see the state of you? I don't care what folk think. Here. Present. Ma picked them out for you. Your size, just your colour. I can't wear these. There might be chemicals. Germs? 
There's no chemicals. There's no germs. There's only something wrong in your heat then. I won't wear them. Listen, I've had 12 years of your lists and your cleaning binges. You're coming in here not getting any better. 12 years of when I go to my work, I take the bio out of my pocket. It smells of bloody Dell. You never know who's been using your pen before you. I've been using my pen before me. I've bought you these nice clothes, and I want to see you wear them the next time I come. Cos all this is going to stop, and you're not coming home this time till you're right in your heat. Understand? You haven't given me my pocket money, Jim. What? So you can spend it on your disinfectants and your sprays? Nature's. How do you want me to be? Like you were a four. How can I? You look nice in them clothes. Don't thank me for this, Mandy. attention to one of our greatest sales success stories. I am speaking to you about a lad who came into my office only two short months ago and asked for a chance to sell windows. He didn't have experience. He didn't have a bloody clue about the replacement window business. But do you know what he did have? Lavery? God, sir. Don't be so daft. Webster? Determination and tenacity, sir. That's two things, and you were wrong both times. McAteer? Positive mental attitude, sir. Good lad. Did you hear that? From the lips of our top salesman, John McAteer. He knows it. I know it. And this young salesman knew it. So let's have a big welcome for our newest salesman of the month, Edward McKenna. Come up, Ben, come up. The District Council want us to tender for a job on a sheltered accommodation scheme. Just a taster, and if we make it onto the approved I'll list... I'll guarantee it tomorrow morning. Well, actually, Magateer, I was thinking of giving it to our rising star here. What about it, McKenna? Are you ready to play ball with the big boys? <laughs> <laughs> Forgot. I've just been snowed under this community open day next week. The administrator's very keen on these outreach initiatives. Have you met Dr. Winter? Not yet. What's her idea to get the radio station going again? <laughs> She's a woman of ideas, all right. 
She wants to introduce group therapy into the acute wards, which the doctors think is a waste of time anyway. Where would we get the trained staff, even if we could afford them? So what happened at the board meeting? No can do, I'm afraid. But the mixer's down to two channels. I'm sorry, Eddie, but the feeling was that if the radio station can't be run with the existing equipment, then it's a luxury we can't afford. But it means a lot to the patients. Well, so would group therapy. Well, between you and me, I don't think that's going to happen either. Listen, I must dash. Lady Chalmers is going to be guest of honour at the open day, and I've got to meet with the friends of St. Jude's to make the arrangements. Oh, which reminds me, Dr. Winter wanted to know if you wanted to do anything for open day. I'll ask the others. Tell me, are the others all still patients? Aye. Just wondered. How bad is it? We're getting nothing. They're afraid we may be a luxury they can't afford, but they do want to know if we want to do something for the open day next week. What do you think? They can't do this. How long can we keep going? A few months. Or a few days. They are nipping my brilliant career in the bud. They weren't ready here, you know. Oh, aye. That's how they do things in here. They never say you can't do that or you can't have that, but you can't. If you want to put a poster up by your bed, they'll tell you there's no blue tack. If you find some blue tack, they'll tell you it'll damage the paint. If you get some paint, they'll tell you the colour doesn't match. They never actually stop you, but somehow you just stop. Well, not this time. Eddie, you tell them that, yes, we do want to do something for the open day. We're going to run a fundraiser to buy a new mixing desk. How? I see a hospital radio roadshow on a flatbed lorry. I see music and dancing. I see reporters. I see no money, Campbell. What we'll charge to play requests and dedications. And then we will pull off one absolutely brilliant publicity stunt that will blaze its colours across every newspaper in Scotland. Such as? I don't know. I, I could get up on the roof of the hospital and threaten to jump unless the punters give us enough to buy a new mixer. Aye, but they might want you to jump. Well, then I'll threaten no to jump unless the punters give us enough to buy a new mixer. Campbell, they are not going to let you threaten to jump off the hospital roof for their mental health week open day. It was only my first idea. Come on, Fergus, Rosalie, we got to mobilise the troops. Hospital radio must survive. <laughs> Rosalie, what are you doing? I'm just writing list. Come on! I want to train as a DJ. Rosalie Garrity. My name is Dr. Cairns. Sorry. Please come in. Mrs. Garrity, you've been with us, what, six weeks now? That's right. Tell me, do you know why you're here? I do. Why are you here? I thought you were the doctor. I am the doctor. Then how do you not know why I'm here? Mrs. Garrity, I'll be frank with you. In my clinical opinion, there is no longer any reason to keep you here. Well, I'll be away then. No, no, please. Sit down. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, your husband is not prepared for you to go home again without certain guarantees. How would you feel about having your medication by long-acting injection in the future? Is there anybody else that you could stay with for the moment? 
a relative or a friend, maybe. Can I not just stay here? No, you can't, Mrs. Garrity. What about your son? You had a son, didn't you? Robert or Robbie. I had a son. Well, I'll, um, I'll see if I can set up a meeting with you and Mr. Garrity and we'll try and work something out, shall we? Fellow inmates, I suppose you're all wondering why I've asked you here today. Just go on, we had been. We all remember what life here was like before hospital radio. Aye, a lot quieter. You're right, Hector. Hospital radio has brought us music, laughter, got us dancing in the corridors. Before that, the most excitement we got here was listening to you fart God Save the Queen or waiting for Myra the Catatonic to blink. Now, is that what you want to go back to? Is it? No. Well, unless we can raise the dosh to buy a new mixer, that's all there's going to be around here. What's a mixer? Shh. But with your help, we are going to be holding a fundraiser at the open day. We are going to be staging a hospital radio roadshow through a five kilowatt PA on a flatbed lorry in the courtyard. And we're going to need volunteers to help set up and run the show, to help rattle tins, but most of all, to help with the main fundraising event of the day, the Looney Pools. Well, do you need pools? We're going to be handing out coupons like this one with details of the contestants. Half loonies, half boring folk. They'll be assigned numbers, one to 24, by lottery. Two loonies in a pair is a score draw worth three points, but if only the odd-numbered contestant is a loonie, then it's a home win, one point. If only the even-numbered contestant is a loonie, then it's an away win, one and a half points. If neither of them are loonies, it's a no-score draw, two points. A pound a line, best of eight, high score wins, five dividends of cheap prizes. What? Basically, it's spot the loony. Oh, oh right. Oh, now, volunteers. Aye, I'll volunteer. Me as well. That's the spirit. Because we're going to show them. We are loonies and we are proud. Say it. We, we are loonies and we are proud. We are loonies and we are proud. Now, any questions? Aye. Can I go to the toilet? Away you go. Any other questions? Where is this flatbed lorry coming for? That's a detail we haven't worked out yet, but we're working on it. So, who's bringing this massive PA, then? Well, that's another detail we've not sorted out yet. What exactly have you sorted out so far? Well, Sandy in the kitchen's been saving us some tins to rattle. <laughs> oh, come on! Have some faith! I thought everybody liked my God Save the Queen. Still rattle the tins, eh? Hello? To call it a day. I've come for my DJ lesson. Hi, come in. Have a seat. And take the moon. My mother used to say if you drink spirits in the afternoon, you're an alcoholic. But then she thought if you drink anything, including shandy, at any time, including weddings and funerals, you were an alcoholic. I don't! You're an ashtray, huh? Are you going to have to shut the station down now? Not yet. What will you do if you have to shut down? Don't know. Spend some more time with my family. You haven't got a family. Throw myself into my work. What do you do anyway? I'm a double glazing salesman. You can't be a double glazing salesman, Eddie. You've not got the killer mentality. I'll have you know I was salesman a month last month. Jesus, what were the other salesmen like? Do you like it? 
What do you think? Are all those yours? Oh, aye. That's just a wee slice of the whole collection. Mostly original recordings. First single I bought was Night Has a Thousand Eyes by Bobby V when I was about 11. It cost me two weeks' pocket money. I must have nearly 1,200 records by now. Elvis Presley, The Beatles, Aretha Franklin, Otis Redding. Nothing since then has touched this music, you know? Aye. And it all came back into fashion, just like I knew it would. I used to send demos, you know, radio stations. Suddenly, about six years ago, when it all started coming back in, I got a call from this guy at Radio Clyde, who said he was really interested in what I was doing. I thought, this is it. This is the break I've been waiting for all my life. And? And the guy got another job and moved down to London or something. Tried to phone the guy who took his place, but he was in a meeting. Well, did you not phone back? Aye, but the meeting apparently went on for about six months. How'd you drink that much, Eddie? Do I? To forget. Forget what? I forget. <laughs> How do you keep burning yourself with cigarettes? I don't think anyone's ever asked me that before. Some things can only be burned out. I'm gonna have to do something about McTavish, Shady. Who? The cat. He's getting that fat. If he tucked his legs in, he could be a football. It's not good for McTavish to be that fat, you know. Fancy. You must know that McTavish. She's pregnant. Don't say that! I'm not gonna stay here if you say that. I'm not gonna stay here. This part is hmm. No, I don't see it. Which button do I press first? Rosalie, what are you doing? Just making a list. It's after midnight, you should be in your bed. I was just going. And don't touch that. It's mine. Rosalie, I'm sure I'll find this very useful. Because they're bound to have flatbed lorries in their fleet. Someone will loan you one I reckon it is for charity. And that's a list of PA iron sales companies. You could have some luck there. And this is a list of local merchants who might donate prizes for your loony pools. You can recruit most of your non-loonies from the staff. Although you'll have to be dead careful, because some of the staff aren't exactly certified non-loonies. But this is a list of staff bulletin boards in the hospital. Can be done, you've cracked it, Rosalie. Oh, sorry. I don't want to put that in my locker. So I could pretend I lost them, then I wouldn't have to wear them. Oh, you don't want to wear them. Don't wear them. Well, Jim says I can't go home unless I wear them. And they want to give me drugs so I can't keep my head straight to defend myself from the 
germs. I'm down to my last bottle of dead hole, but Jim won't let me buy any more. And the doctor says... Well, don't let them push you around, Rosalie. Stand up to them. Oh. You just say, I'm not going to take any more of this crapola. I couldn't do that. No. I'm not American. Uh, but it sounds that brilliant when they say it in the films. I'm not going to take any more of this crapola. I'm not going to take any more of this crapola. Oh, you're going to have to work on the accent. <laughs> I'm not going to take any more of this crapola. <laughs> That's the <a> spirit. <laughs> What am I going to do with these clothes? Chuck them, burn them. Oh, I couldn't do that, Robbie. Well, give them to Mad John, the pyromaniac. He'll take care of them. Did you just call me Robbie? Maybe I'll just put them under my mattress. I've got a sales presentation this morning. You don't have breakfast. Oh, I had some coffee. Look, I've left some money on the table for the gas bill. It was Lithuanian club last night. I'm sorry, I had to talk to Griffin about this district council tender. All night I wait and you don't come. Why you think I go? I thought you like to speak Lithuanian. Speak? All night I listen to Mrs. Prakowska speak about her children, her grandchildren, about her visit she made to Lithuania. Everybody these days, she says, makes visit to Lithuania. Mrs. Prakowska is a snob. How do you keep talking to her? Because she has three granddaughters, very young, very pretty, no married. You meet them? Any of them nearsighted or stupid? No. Well, I think we should forget it. Look, I've got to go. When you come home. I don't know. I've got to go in the station today. I'm training a new DJ. She's keen. She. Yeah, I. Look, look, I'm going to be late. Is she what age? I don't know. 28, 29. Was she married? I, I, I didn't ask. Don't oh, think so. Oh, Eddie, this is wonderful news. You must ask her to come tomorrow. I, I'll make me. She can't even come oh, tomorrow. Well, the next day. Look, she needs permission first. Oh, she's peasant lass. You ask father first. She's a patient. She, she, She's crazy, one. Hi. Look, we'll have an open day Saturday. How'd you not come? Just go. Go. I give up. Listen, if I make the sale, I'll buy you one of those wee televisions you wanted. You can watch Blind Date in the Bath. I don't want television. I want to make music like Mrs. Prashkowska. <laughs> Just pledging my kidneys.
remind you that tomorrow's Jude's Hospital Radio Roadshow is going to roll into open day. And we need your help to raise money for a new mix-up. Without it, Hospital Radio will soon sound like this. So, come along and show your friends, your relations and the local community that we are loonies and we are proud! Jesus, what's all this? You're late! Sorry, I was working. Oh, well, here's your list. You better get started, you'll never get through it. Go to car, put key in ignition, drive to hot jam PA hire. No, there's your address. Collect speakers, put in car, drive back, take key from ignition. Rosalie's nothing if not thorough. <laughs> Francine, isn't that banner ready yet? It's finished. And then I'll have to help Fergus call the leads. Just give me a minute. A minute? You're only halfway down your list and it's nearly eight o'clock. And you, don't just stand there like a dead sheep. Go to your car. And what are you doing? I'm in the middle of my show. OK, but hurry up. Rosalie, can you not see I am busy? Your husband's just arrived. Dr Ken's can see you now. I'll be there in a minute. I can't stop long. What was that? Power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts every loony. Did she organise all this? Huh? But tomorrow night, this hospital isn't going to know what hit it. And by Monday morning, the loony pools is going to be all over every newspaper in Glasgow, paving the way to our career in professional radio. Fergus faxed the press releases this morning. Aye, well, just don't be too disappointed if the press don't show up, OK? What do you mean? It's just that there's nothing all that newsworthy about a bunch of loonies staging a stunt at an open day. For it's Mental Health Week. Well, I gave up smoking on National No Smoking Day, but I didn't put my name in the paper. <sighs> I better get these speakers. Listen, Campbell. We just raised enough money to buy a cheap, nasty second-hand mixer to keep the station going. That'll be enough for me. Oh, well, that's your trouble, Eddie. You aim low every time. Ah, but I reach my goals. She's not ready. Like living well. Your wife is suffering from a compulsive illness, Mr. Garrity, and if she forgets to take her medication while she's at home. Forgets? Aye. She often forgets not to throw it down the lobby at the first opportunity. I think the simple solution is for your wife to have her medication by long acting injection, so she wouldn't have to remember to take tablets. What does she think about that? Mrs. Garrity. I think he should give me my pocket money. I'm nearly out of debt or pretty well. See that? I mean, we're trying to have a rational conversation here. She's just landed a spaceship on planet Deto. She's completely out of control. And you're trying to dump your problem in me. What I'm trying to do is find a solution. If I've told him once, I've told him a hundred times. The solution is stronger drugs. Four years ago, when Dr. Patterson was in charge, they gave her stronger drugs and she was just fine. Just fine until some bright spark got the idea she'd be okay in a lower dose. Well, she's no. You can't stop me coming home to my own house. I'll change the locks. I'll screw the windows shut. Cos you're not coming home until you're under control. Mr Garrity, I know you're upset. But if you refuse to have your wife home, I can't keep her here more than a few weeks. After that, until we could find her a place in supported accommodation, and there's a three to four month waiting list. She could end up in bed and breakfast accommodation, sharing kitchen and bathroom facilities with other disturbed people who may not mind so much if the toilet isn't flushed or if the feet tend to stick to the kitchen floor. Now, this could have a catastrophic effect on your wife's condition. Is that what you want? I can't cope anymore. I just can't. And what you're saying is that were we to increase your wife's medication, you'd feel better able to cope at home? Aye. If you guarantee she'd take it. How would you feel about that? All right, then. OK. We'll try on a new dosage by injection, and we'll see where we are in a week's time, shall we? Thank you, Doctor. I wore the dress, Jim. Aye, 
very nice. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You're a voluntary patient. No, I want to do it. You couldn't just wait till Monday to give me this injection, though. I have a lot of things to do. Of course. Well, Dr. Fergus, the day's entertainment is reaching its climax. The last two contestants mount the stage. The audience mark their coupons. They hand them in when suddenly a swarm of photographers surge forward because it turns out that one of the contestants was none other than Spike Milligan. The greatest manic depressive of our time. Spike Milligan? Seven out of ten folk will probably think he's a patient. What a news story, eh? What a scoop. There's only two things wrong with that, Campbell. First, how are you going to get Spike Milligan to appear in your loony pools for tomorrow afternoon? Well, a pal of mine's girlfriend's sister went to university with his grandson. Second, everybody knows what he looks like. Good point. Well, we need to disguise him. What are you doing wearing that horrible dress? What's going on? These are the speakers you sent for. You can't bring these in here yet. Sorry. I haven't cleaned them. We'll take them out. Yeah, we're going, we're going. It's gone. I'll get them up. That was my last bottle. It's OK, it's OK. What am I going to do? There's germs. There's Shh, germs. Okay. Eddie's going to get you some more from the late night shop. Where's the late night shop? Fergus will show you. But I've escaped twice today already. Germs kill and they're everywhere. Do you want them to come and sit there or go? Germs kill. Do you not understand? Germs kill. Robbie got sick. Jim said I wasn't washing the lettuce properly. So I washed it and washed it. But he was still sick. Jim said it was because the floors was dirty, so I washed them and washed them. But Robbie stayed sick. Jim said it was the drains, the toilet, the sinks, the dirty washing, the cutting board, the kitchen knives. I made lists of all the places the germs could be. I washed everything. But Robbie stayed sick until he died. I never managed to kill all those germs. What did he die of? Leukemia. Rosalie. And Jim worshipped that lad. He hasn't been the same since. Well, McKenna, I understand congratulations on Nodda. Oh, you've made your sale. District Council's just accepted your tender. <laughs> really? Quite a coup, eh? <laughs> and a hefty wee commission in the bank. Oh, well, I, I just... I just tendered what Griffin told me. Oh, no, no. You know what your problem is, McKenna? You've got an inferiority complex. <laughs> oh, which may have something to do with the fact that you are inferior. Let me tell you this. Anybody could have made that sale. My great auntie Betty, who can't see her speak since she had a stroke, could have made that sale. Sounds like you could have used the commission. Griffin may be a daft prat, but it will not escape even his notice sooner or later that you are a useless waster that couldn't give away Pink Lady to a street corner drunk, never mind sell it to him. Just watch your back, McKenna. Get on down. The 
Girls Don't Cry, The Four Seasons. All kinds of everything. You're going too fast. You're just finding too slow. Yes, it's time again to separate the loonies from the morning folk. So get ready to mark your next, boys and girls, because if you are one of our lucky winners today, you may walk out here with one of our fabulous prizes. Wait till you happen to be on a section 26, means somebody will come and bring you right back again. You could win a teddy bear, a dancing coke can, a bottle of cheap sherry, a fruit cake, or a week's supply of cat food. We wanted to give away a colour telly and a portable jacuzzi, but they wouldn't trust us with anything electrical. <laughs> Rosalie, Mark's no here. What? He's supposed to be contestant 22, but they discharged him this morning. You have to take his place then. No, I couldn't. You're oh, right. But no straight away, he was one of the loonies. Ladies and gentlemen, loonies and loonies, please welcome Fergus, get our up next there. pair of contestants, I said numbers 21 there. and 22 on your coupon. No, Fergus. And you've helped any sort of these requests. Can you spot the loonies, day trippers? Have a good wee look while I play you this dedication from all the folk on Ward 11 to all the nice residents of the surrounding community. And wouldn't it be nice to get on with me neighbours? A wider shade of pale, local hand. My way, thanks and Atta. Somebody broke it. Oh, Johnny be good then. How? I like Johnny be good. I can't even find a wider shade of pale. It's no one needs in a W. But it's a wider shade of pale. It begins with an E. Oh, no, they're all out of order now. Rosalie! That bastard caretaker just said we've to unplug a gear at four o'clock. Everything's plugged into the PowerPoint in his wee room and he's going to unplug us so as he can lock up. Oh, perfect. That's just perfect. All right, Hector. You spill them so you can file them back. What about the requests? OK, everybody, no more requests between the letters A and H. You got that? Eddie, go and get us some electric. What? Try the officers, try the ward. Here's a list of all the power supplies in the hospital. Now go! How does it have to be me? You think they're going to give their electricity to a loony? You've got five minutes. My show's about to start. There's not going to be a show without electric. Now go! People, bribe them if you need to. But who's going to take your show? Francine, this is your big moment. Oh, no! Rosalie! Danny and Mary have eaten one of the prizes. Which one? The fruit cake. Well, at least it wasn't the teddy. I'm not going to take the show. I'm not ready. Uh, Rosalie, I've got someone here I'd like to meet. You're going to have to wait your turn. You see those stalls over there? There's a list of every stall and what they're selling. Well, away you go and buy a fruit cake. Rosalie, are you listening to me? You did it before, you can do it again. Well, that's just about all from me this afternoon. It's I come before L, or this L come before I. I comes before L. Rosalie, she's not dead. He's gone in to find us some electric. If he doesn't find it, the next two minutes, the caretaker's pulling the plug. They, they can't do this. I haven't been a contestant in the loony pools yet. I can see the audience, Fergus. We'll be fine. Does this come before tea? Could you help him with his alphabet? I know you're busy, but I just want... Can you not see I'm busy? Right. Your time's up. I'm locking up now. If you pull that plug, you're pulling the plug in my whole career. It's open day, for Christ's sake. Just another day for me. Hey, we have a little girl here, Jennifer. Look at it. Look at it. If that is the first word, should it not go into the teeth? Rosalie, I didn't find the fruit cake, but I found some sandwiches. Well, nice is there. Hello. This is the fabulous Francine. Rosalie, what? What do you want? Rosalie, I'm Lady Sarah Chalmers, patron of the Friends of St Jude. Sorry. Sweaty hands. I can see how busy you are. But I just wanted to congratulate you personally on what a splendid job you've done in helping to make this Open Day such a success. Thank you. It's not a very trendy cause, working with the mentally ill. Believe me, I know. But you're a marvel, Rosalie. However did you organise something so vast? I... Made list. And it's time once again for the Looney Pools. Just a small contribution. Thank you so much. So, get ready to mark your X for the last time as I give you contestants number 23 and 24. So you decided to come. She's nice last. For the final time, can you spot the loony? How you don't ask her for the... Oh, she's the one I was telling you about, the new DJ I'm training. She doesn't look crazy. Do I know that guy? We have one without the glasses, Mr Milligan. 
cuss. I knew the disguise wouldn't work. Try acting Lydia. What? For that, I want money. <laughs> For... <laughs> Do you mind being asked to play Spot the Loony, Mr. Milligan? No. I do not mind being a spot the loony, but I object to being called spot. He <laughs> <laughs> did it. The <laughs> bastard got spite Millie. <laughs> Still get your tail. Fergus bought me a new bottle. That was really kind of him. You should have come to the open day on Saturday, Jim. We had music and dancing, and Spike Milligan was there. I'm not 100% sure who he is, but he's dead famous, so he is. Where's your new dress? It's burnt. You burnt it? No! <clears throat> but I did give it to my John the Pyromaniac, and I think he burned it. You had your injection yet? No. I told them I didn't want it. You're not coming home if you've not had that injection. Aye. I know. But I'm not going to take any more of this crapola. What? I told them, and I'm telling you, I'm not going to take any more of this crapola. Where did you get that thing? I think it's from an American film. Robbie always liked those American films, didn't he? Aye. I still miss him, Jim. Aye. I'd like to thank all of you who turned out to support the team for Open Day on Saturday. And having raised the grand total of six hundred and forty-three pounds and sixty-seven pence, plus an anonymous donation of five hundred pounds by somebody with a lot of musical taste, we are still in business. I think you all deserve a big hand. What are you doing? Just popped out for the peepers. Well, we're in. Yes, sir! Daily record, evening times, the Herald, just a pair of loony goons. Spike Milligan with Campbell Bean of St. Jude's Hospital Radio. We've done it, we're on our way. Campbell, you are a genius. Genius? She's the genius. Rosalie, we're on our way. Sorry. <laughs>